Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Continuing on from last week's story of Joby Aviation signing a deal to bring their flying taxis to Dubai, this week Lilium announced a partnership with Philjets to bring 10 of their electric VTOL jets to the Philippines. Part of the agreement involves developing an on-demand Uber-like service to use these unique aircraft, and out of all the similar stories we've seen over the past year, this one might make the most sense, especially in a place like the Philippines with its more than 7,500 different islands. Switching over to robotics and the march of general-purpose humanoid robots continues to gather pace, quite literally. Unitree uploaded a new video claiming a new humanoid robot speed record of 3.3 meters per second on flat ground for their H1 bot. They also showed off some new coordination demos of the robot jumping and picking up items. In similar news, Sanctuary AI gave us some updates with a new video of their Phoenix bot carrying out autonomous sorting tasks much faster than any of the previous demonstrations we've seen. Sanctuary's hand dexterity has probably been the best we've seen from any of the robot designers thus far, and now adding extra speed could potentially put it ahead of the other manufacturers on the market. Chinese robot designer UB Tech also uploaded a video the other day, demonstrating how their own humanoid Walker S robot is being trialled on the assembly line of a car manufacturing centre. Though this video is obviously heavily staged, it seems to be part of a strong trend, which I've been talking about for a while. I wonder how many corporations are watching from the sidelines and weighing up the cost-benefit of general-purpose humanoids compared to the existing hyper-specialised robots they already use. To further illustrate this, last week Figure AI disclosed that they have raised a whopping $675 million to commercialise, expand and get their robots into more real-world settings. This particular investment round is interesting because big players such as Microsoft, OpenAI's startup fund, NVIDIA, Jeff Bezos, Intel and others all put money in. In research news and the Toyota Robotics Institute has been exploring how soft robotics might integrate with humanoid robots. The Puno research bot has sensor-filled soft hands, arms and body, and the idea is to see how it could interact with the world in less robotic ways, since almost all the general-purpose robots we've seen recently pick up and manipulate objects with hard, clasping hands. This research is also taking advantage of TRI's diffusion learning model that we showed last year, where new tasks can be learned through repeated human demonstrations. Here's another exoskeleton research project, this time from the IIT in Italy. The twin lower leg powered exo can assist users with some or no motor function in their legs, giving wheelchair users the ability to stand and walk upright. It has three modes, one automatic mode for users without any motor function, another is aimed specifically at rehab scenarios, and a third for users who might have partial or full function in one leg and no function in the other. The researchers are looking at gaining an EU manufacturing certification, then they intend to bring the product onto the market. No word on price yet. Switching to automation, an Uber Eats has announced a partnership with Mitsubishi and Kartken to bring autonomous food deliveries to Tokyo, Japan, starting this month in selected areas. Electric Sheep Robotics announced Verdi 2, a new robot and accompanying AI model, designed for landscaping and outdoor maintenance. The company says the bots can autonomously trim lawns and bushes and blow leaves without needing any prior training due to the new ES1 large world model for the outdoors that they developed. A more detailed overview of how they achieved this is on their blog. Alright, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.